Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to continue to read some more wonder. Um, I'm going to start on page 144, which is where we left off, but I'm going to give you a little recap from page 143 so that we can kind of remember where we were so we can move on. So, on page 143, the last paragraph says, Fourthly, now that I know him, I would say I actually do want to be friends with August. At first, I admit it, I wasn't only friendly to him because Mr. Tushman asked me to be, especially nice and all that. But now, I would choose to hang out with him. He laughs at all my jokes, and I kind of feel like I can tell August anything. Like he's a good friend. Like if all the guys in fifth grade were lined up against a wall and I got to choose anyone I wanted to hang out with, I would choose August. So this is Jack talking about August and we're going to move into the next chapter and it is entitled Ex-Friends. Bleeding scream? What the heck? Summer Dawson has always been a bit out there, but this was too much. All I did was ask her why August was acting like he was mad at me or something. I figured she would know. And all she said was, bleeding scream? I don't even know what that means. It's so weird because one day, me and August were friends. And the next day, whoosh, he was hardly talking to me. And I haven't the slightest idea why. When I said to him, hey August, you mad at me or something? He shrugged and walked away. So I would take that as a definite yes. And since I know for a fact that I didn't do anything to him to be mad about, I figured Summer could tell me what's up. But all I got from her was bleeding scream. Yeah, big help. Thanks, Summer. You know, I've got plenty of other friends in school, so if August wants to officially be my ex-friend, then fine. That is okay by me. See if I care. I've started ignoring him like he's ignoring me in school now. This is actually kind of hard since we sit next to each other in practically every class. Other kids have noticed and have started asking if me and August have had a fight. Nobody asks August what's going on. Hardly anyone ever talks to him anyway. I mean, the only person he hangs out with other than me is Summer. Sometimes he hangs out with Reed Kingsley a little bit, and the two Maxes got him playing Dungeons and Dragons a couple of times at recess. Charlotte, for all her goody two-shoeing, doesn't ever do more than nod hello when she's passing him in the hallway. And I don't know if everyone's still playing the plague behind his back, because no one ever really told me about it directly. But my point is, it's not like he has a whole lot of other friends he could be hanging out with instead of me. If he wants to diss me, he's the one who loses, not me. So this is how things are between us now. We only talk to each other about school stuff if we absolutely have to. Like, I'll say, what did Ruben say the homework was? And he'll answer. Or he'll be like, can I use your pencil sharpener? And I'll get my sharpener out of my pencil case for him. But as soon as the bell rings, we go our separate ways. Why this is good is because I get to hang out with a lot more kids now. Before, when I was hanging out with August all the time, kids weren't hanging out with me because they'd have to hang out with him. Or they would keep things from me, like the whole thing about the plague. I think I was the only one who wasn't in on it, except for Summer and maybe the D&D &D crowd. And the truth is, though nobody's that obvious about it, nobody wants to hang out with him. Everyone's way too hung up on being in the popular group. And he is just as far from the popular group as you can get. But now, I can hang out with anyone I want. If I wanted to be in the popular group, I could totally be in the popular group. Why this is bad is, well, A, I don't actually enjoy hanging out with the popular group that much. And B, I actually liked hanging out with August. So this is kind of messed up, and it's all August's fault. Snow. The first snow of winter hit right before Thanksgiving break. School was closed, so we got an extra day of vacation. I was glad about that because I was so bummed about this whole August thing, and I just wanted some time to chill without having to see him every day. Also, waking up to a snow day is just about my favorite thing in the world, 
I love that feeling when you first open your eyes in the morning and you don't even know why everything seems different than usual. Then it hits you. Everything is quiet. No cars honking, no buses going down the street. Then you run over to the window and outside everything is covered in white. The sidewalks, the trees, the cars on the street, your window panes. And when that happens on a school day and you find out your school is closed, well, I don't care how old I get, I'm always going to think that's the best feeling in the world. And I'm never going to be one of those grown-ups that use an umbrella when it's snowing. Ever. Dad's school was closed too, so he took me and Jamie sledding down Skeleton Hill in the park. They say a little kid broke his neck while sledding down that hill a few years ago, but I don't know if that's actually true or just one of those legends. On the way home, I spotted this banged up wooden sled kind of propped up against the old Indian rock monument. Dad said to leave it. It was just garbage. But something told me it would make the greatest sled ever. So Dad let me drag it home and I spent the rest of the day fixing it up. I super glued the broken slats together and wrapped some heavy duty white duct tape around them for extra strength. Then I spray painted the whole thing white with the paint I had gotten for the alabaster sphinx. I was making for the Egyptian Museum project. When it was all dry, I painted lightning in gold letters on the middle piece of wood. And I made a little lightning bolt symbol above the letters. It looked very professional, I have to say. Dad was like, wow, Jackie, you were right about that sled. The next day, we went back to Skeleton Hill with lightning. It was the fastest thing I'd ever ridden. So, so, so much faster than the plastic sleds we'd been using. And because it had gotten warmer outside, the snow had become crunchier and wetter. Good packing snow. Me and Jamie took turns on lightning all afternoon. We were in the park until our fingers were frozen and our lips had turned a little blue. Dad practically had to drag us home. By the end of the weekend, the snow had started turning gray and yellow, and then a rainstorm turned most of the snow to slush. When we got back to school on Monday, there was no snow left. It was rainy and yucky the first day back from vacation. A slushy day. That's how I was feeling inside, too. I nodded hey to August the first time I saw him. We were in front of the lockers. He nodded hey back. I wanted to tell him about lightning but I didn't. Fortune favors the bold. Mr. Brown's December precept was fortune favors the bold. We were all supposed to write a paragraph about some time in our lives when we did something very brave and how, because of it, something good happened to us. I thought about this a lot, to be truthful. I have to say, I think the bravest thing I ever did was become friends with August. But I couldn't write about that, of course. I was afraid we'd have to read it out loud. So, or Mr. Brown would put them on the bulletin board like he does sometimes. So instead, I wrote this lame thing about how I used to be afraid of the ocean when I was little. It was dumb because I couldn't think of anything else. I wonder what August wrote about. He probably had a lot of things to choose from. Private school. My parents are not rich. I say this because people sometimes think that everyone who goes to private school is rich. But that isn't true with us. Dad's a teacher and mom's a social worker, which means they don't have the kind of jobs where people make gazillions of dollars. We used to have a car, but we sold it when Jamie started kindergarten at Beecher Prep. We don't live in a big townhouse or in one of those doorman buildings along the park. We live on the top floor of a five-story walk-up. We rent from an old lady named Dona Petra, on the way on the other side of Broadway. That's code for the section of North River Heights where people don't want to park their cars. Me and Jamie share a room. I overhear my parents talk about the things like, can we do without an air conditioner one more year? Or maybe I can work two jobs this summer. So today at recess, I was hanging out with Julian and Henry and Miles. Julian, who everyone knows is rich, was like, I hate that I have to go back to Paris this Christmas. It's so boring. Dude, 
But it's like Paris. I said like an idiot. Believe me, it's so boring, he said. My grandmother lives in this house in the middle of nowhere. It's like an hour away from Paris in this tiny, tiny, tiny village. I swear to God, nothing happens there. I mean, it's like, oh wow, there's another fly on the wall. Look, there's a new dog sleeping on the sidewalk. Yippee! I laughed. Sometimes Julian could be very funny. Though, my parents are talking about throwing a big party this year instead of going to Paris. I hope so. What are you doing over break? Said Julian. Just hanging out, I said. You're so lucky, he said. I hope it snows again, I answered. I got this new sled that is so amazing. I was just about to tell them about lightning, but Miles started talking first. I got a new sled too, he said. My dad got it from Hamacher Schlemmer. Schell- Sh- it's so state of the art. How could a sled be state of the art, said Julian. It was like $800 or something. Whoa. We could all go sledding and have a race down Skeleton Hill, I said. That hill is so lame, answered Julian. Are you kidding, I said. Some kid broke his neck there. That's why it's called Skeleton Hill. Julian narrowed his eyes and looked at me like I was the biggest moron in the world. It's called Skeleton Hill because it was an ancient Indian burial ground. Duh, he said. Anyway, it should be called Garbage Hill now. It's so freaking junky. Last time I was there, it was so gross, like with soda cans and broken bottles and stuff. He shook his head. I left my old sled there, said Miles. It was the crappiest piece of junk, and someone took it, too. Maybe a hobo wanted to go sledding, laughed Julian. Where'd you leave it? I said. By the big rock at the bottom of the hill. And I went back the next day, and it was gone. I couldn't believe someone actually took it. Here's what we can do, said Julian. Next time it snows, my dad could drive us all up to this golf course in Westchester that makes Skeleton Hill look like nothing. Hey, Jack, where are you going? I had started to walk away. I've got to get a book out of my locker, I lied. I just wanted to get away from them fast. I didn't want anyone to know that I was the hobo who had taken the sled. All right, we're going to stop there, and I will read more later. Okay, bye, guys.